everyone. Today's video is going to be about my fitness journey and about my DEXA scan results and what I'm going to do about it. And we are going to go through this little journey of mine and I'm going to kind of just bring you guys, fast forward you guys to today and we will talk about everything that I have as far as information. I'm going to start off by kind of giving you guys a um, background story and it's been about six or seven years since I have developed a like a habit to do some you know fitness stuff in my life um, as far as like increased activity or having some sort of nutrition ideas or fitness ideas and things like that having just having the concept of fitness and nutrition and just knowing that those two to especially the nutrition part really goes hand in hand and that it is pretty much about caloric balance and it took a really long time um, I first started dabbling with the keto diet and at the same time doing the keto diet and learning how to strength lift or power lift and at that time, I had no inkling of what like a diet consisted of or what a kind of like a workout plan consisted of at all. That is really annoying. I don't know if you guys heard all of that, but that was really annoying. So anyway, um, so at the time when I had first started, I had no knowledge of what to do. I did not come from an athletic background. I had no previous athletic experience or anything like that. So that in itself was really difficult for me to attain and really hold on to the knowledge. And it was a huge learning curve for me. It was a very it was a very hard time for me to learn things because I was not I was not I had no idea about working out, I had no idea about nutrition, anything at all. Kind of speeding it up to today, I have tons of knowledge on nutrition, I have some knowledge on you know, fitness plans or the type or the style of working out um, that is better for myself. And everything thing everything works differently for everybody so what works for me may not work for you in the long run but as of right now this is what I have figured out and I'm just going to let you guys in and see let you guys know everything that I have figured out for myself and maybe this could work for you so I'm going to kind of take you back to last year where I got more serious about my health and lifestyle and last April of 2018 I decided to kind of um, take um, pretty much take charge of my lifestyle and I wanted to get really accurate measurements um, as far as progress or tracking my progress goes as far as my body. So I did look up um, some local DEXA scan places around here and there was one local to me and I had went there the first time last April. I just wanted to establish a baseline. That way for the future I can figure out what I'm doing, what's working, what's not working. So at the time of April, what I was currently doing as far as nutrition and as far as like an uh, exercise plan. I wanted to start dieting. I wanted to start um, eating at a caloric deficit and I wanted to change up my exercise um, plans. I wanted to do something different and I am accustomed to powerlifting or you know, strength training, so that was something that I was really used to, but at the time I was really burnt out on it and I didn't really know what else to do. Taking that baseline of April, I was kind of doing conditioning, like conditioning more cardio, um, which I've never done cardio before. <sighs> I've never done cardio before. I did not dedicate, I never dedicated like 15, 20 minutes on the treadmill whenever I went to the gym or even like on my rest days. I never incorporated any sort of cardio time. I was dieting at about 1500 calories. 
So at that time, and I have some results here um, from my DEXA scan, and I'm just going to go off some basic numbers here. And if you guys don't know what a DEXA scan is, um, a DEXA scan is a machine that mainly, the main purpose of it is to measure your bone density. And that's pretty much like in the medical field, that's what it's really used for. Um, in the fitness industry, you can measure your lean body mass and your body fat percentage. So for me, when I had went back in April of last year, I was a total of 159.8 pounds. The amount of fat mass on me was 60.1 pounds and the amount of lean body mass on me was 94.7 pounds. And that that in itself um, was not, 159 pounds was not my heaviest. Um, honestly, my heaviest was like 175 and that was when I was doing a powerlifting competition and I just wanted to see wh where I could get and with just gaining a lot of strength. Um, I wanted to see where I could get and how much I could lift. Over the, you know, the next or the recent years, I have lost a lot of that weight and I liked, my body really liked 159. That was my baseline. And then from April to December, I had focused on the conditioning and light resistance training. Um, I would probably say a little bit light to moderate resistance training because not everything was lightweight. Um, it was higher repetitions and it was more intense for me as far as like uh, getting my heart rate up um, really fast and performing the exercises that I don't usually do. At that time, that's what I had focused on and I was eating around 1500 calories. Um, for me, that would have placed me in a deficit every single day. I just could not adhere to that 1500 calorie deficit. No matter how much I tried, I had extra snacks, I had extra of this or that, and I just could not for the life of me stick to that 1500 calorie diet no matter how much i had exercised no much no matter how much cardio i did or anything it just was not working um i definitely had felt it but in my mind i was like i'm working so hard that i want to believe that something is happening so fast forward to December and from this whole time, this whole time that from April until December, I was doing the conditioning and the resistance training like that and still trying to eat at a deficit of 1500 calories. Well, my scan that I did back in December, my total mass was 159.1 my fat mass was 60.2 and my lean body mass had actually gone down to 93.8 and at the time it was really disheartening and really unmotivating for me to hear all of this like i felt like i was working so hard to see some sort of result and i thought i felt maybe some sort of result but i did not and i was struggling and I cannot say that I did my best because I was honestly really bored with the workouts. And again, just really, really hard to adhere to the 1500 calorie diet, which for me, I knew that that set me at a deficit because they have this thing that records or that can measure your resting metabolic rate. At the time for me, yes, 1500 calories was a deficit, but incorporating all of these snacks that I would put in after and I'd be like oh yeah it's okay you know a little bite here a little bite there yeah it was too much from December until the beginning of January probably like a week into January I had went back to what I knew worked for me and in the past the first time that I ever, ever, ever did a caloric deficit or ate a, at a caloric deficit, I did lean gains or AKA it was carb cycling. And it would be where on my rest days, I would eat higher fat, lower carb. And then on my workout days, I would eat at my maintenance calories, but I would eat 
low fat and higher carbs so that was what I did and it worked so well for me and I saw results when I did that so I went back to what I knew would work for me and I also changed up my exercises I went back to strength training but doing a little bit more <laughs> Um, I would strength train and then after that I would do accessory work afterwards and then there would be days where I only did accessory work. That definitely has what those two major things had changed. I was still eating at a caloric deficit. The deficit was a lot more on the rest days but on my training days I would still eat at maintenance. I was still in a caloric deficit and I was also changing up my exercise style because I knew that strength training was what worked for me. And so, um, from December into January, the I did not do the carb cycling just yet. Um, kind of backtrack a little bit. Last stitch effort, I was... <laughs> I... Uh, it's so hard to say, but um, I was actually eating about 1,300 calories and um, I tried to eliminate carbohydrates because the way that I thought about it in my head, even though I knew that it was about energy balance, I, I was thinking that maybe if I had taken out, like, just to make it easier to eliminate foods that won't tempt me. And honestly, it's the carbohydrates that are really, really, I love, I love, I love rice, I love pasta, I love bread, I love cookies, I love, you know, veggies, like, I love anything with carbohydrates in it, um, naturally, you know, as, as a female, <laughs> um, no, but really, I just, I love anything with carbohydrates because that's just what I grew up on, I grew up on rice, um, so it's just definitely, I figured that if I could just take that out, that it would be a lot easier, but it was actually a lot harder because I just felt, the first couple of weeks I felt fine eating at 1300 calories with minimal carbohydrates. I felt okay the first couple of weeks, but then a couple of weeks after that, I just felt really, really sluggish, really irritable, and really tired all the time. So I had to change it up, and that's when I said, okay, now even though we started the tra strength training, I need to do something about my nutrition. So that's when I had switched over to the carb cycling in like the first week of January. And ever since then, strength training, carb cycling, um, it's been probably about, it's February 24th, so it's been about a month, maybe a little bit over a month. I'd probably say about six, five or six weeks since I have done completely strength training and carb cycling and not only do I feel better, <laughs> I feel a lot better, but I have been seeing results in the gym as well. Fast forwarding to yesterday. Yesterday I went back to go get another DEXA scan because from December until now it's been about three months and I wanted to see where I was at and I also wanted to incorporate um, a free day tomorrow. So. I wanted to have all of this planned out that way I knew what I was doing afterwards and here are the results so total mass was 155.8 which is amazing I was thrilled to see that that's what my body weight was because I did not weigh myself the day of or the day before and I didn't want to James actually had to take the way take away the scale for me for like two months because I was obsessing over the numbers and I knew that I shouldn't have done that but it was just very I was so stuck on the idea of losing weight that I just I just had to like weigh myself every single day just to make sure that the scale wasn't going up but then I saw the scale going up so that's what really made it not good so total mass was 155.8 and then my fat mass was it went from 60.2 to 54 pounds and that is awesome I lost six pounds of fat there and then lean body mass it went from 93.8 to 96.7 which is an increase in 2.9 pounds which is awesome and it's crazy because it's so crazy to see it like this because I think this is a lot better of a depiction of 
what I've been doing and how this has been working because even though it says total mass was it went from 159.1 to 155.8 but you can see where it's changing here you can see that it was a lot of fat mass that was lost but with the amount of fat mass that was lost it was replaced by some lean body mass so that is awesome it's amazing i I did not want to go in to this again with any expectations, but I was really happy to find out that something that I knew worked for me in the past worked for me again, and that is awesome. So I'm really happy with that. I'm really happy with the results so far, but however, I think that this is a really good time to incorporate a reverse diet and this is ultimately what I have been trying to do. I've been trying to see how much body mass or fat mass I could get off of me and going into this reverse dieting because honestly looking back at my track record of dieting or gaining or however you want to say it, I've pretty much ate at a caloric restriction or caloric deficit more than I have eating at a gaining or you know caloric gaining or bulking phase so at this time I think that is really good for myself to go through a reverse diet and what a reverse diet is is basically eating to have your metabolism adapt to a higher level of sorry, of caloric um, intake. So basically the goal here for a reverse diet is to increase your caloric intake, but at the same time trying to keep the fat gain at a minimum. And this is not necessarily the same thing as bulking. Bulking, you kind of accept that you're going to get more lean body mass with the amount of fat here with the reverse diet is just you're trying to minimize the fat gain and at the same time trying to increase how much you're eating. In the next few videos, I want to take you guys through my reverse dieting and bring you through those phases and see how everything goes because I think that a lot of the things that people don't really talk about is what happens after you diet and a lot of people think that maybe oh yeah yeah just go back to your maintenance but your maintenance is not going to be the same as it was after you finish your diet so when you first do your diet you could be your maintenance could be 1700 calories but then after you diet and you're done with that dieting phase your new maintenance because your body adapts your new maintenance could be 1500 calories so that is why I really wanted to do this reverse diet and kind of document it for you guys so that you can see what happens when you do a reverse diet and how it can benefit you in the long run. This is what I think I need because I have not done this but one time and that was a few years ago and lately I've been feeling very sluggish. I've been feeling a little bit weaker and it could just be a mental thing but I think that this, this will be really good for me and this will give me a peace of mind as far as my nutrition and overall just composition will go and this time I will attempt to incorporate like diet breaks or um, not diet breaks, mini cuts within the reverse diet because I think that'll be really good. I think it'll be really fun. <laughs> this is weird um, to say, but I think it'll be really fun and I think that it's going to be really good. So, um, Also, I've been incorporating or trying to incorporate more cheat days or free, free days into my diet because I think this is a really good opportunity for me to just kind of mentally let go of any sort of tracking that I do because I do track my food every single day I know exactly what I'm eating and how much I'm eating so I think that's a really good time it's a really good time for me to just kind of like let loose for a day and the next one that I'm going to be doing is tomorrow so that's my cheat day is tomorrow and I'm going to be recording that and seeing I'm actually going to track it but I'm not going to track it until later on but 
yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed listening to this thank you so much if you have made it this far don't forget to subscribe and like and comment down below let me know what you think maybe google if you are interested in doing a dexa scan finding a place near you to do it and that is it i hope you guys enjoyed i will see you in the next video bye